In the meantime, the Nigerian president says his government is working on an ambitious energy plan towards reducing the energy shortcomings by the year 2030. While speaking at a high-level dialogue on energy, Buhari announces plans to electrify 5 million households as well as 20 million people using decentralized solar energy solutions. The Nigerian leader calls for support from developed countries to unlock the financing needed to accelerate a just energy transition for all. According to him, the scale of financing required for Nigeria to achieve net zero amount of that amounts to over $400 billion across the Nigerian economy in excess of business as usual spending over the next 30 years. Our Eyes News Analyst and lecturer at Beijing University, Abiodu Adini, joins me now to discuss the outcomes of uh, this bilateral meetings as well as its impact on the country. Abiodu, thank you so much for being here tonight. Well, we've seen the president really busy uh, in New York with all mm. the bilateral meetings. But uh, let's uh, kick off with uh, the call by Antonio Guterres right now. He's saying that Buhari, as the president of Nigeria, should actually wield his influence in terms of stabilizing West Africa, especially looking at uh, the coups that we've experienced in Mali and recently Guinea as well. Um, but the question right now is, this is a huge responsibility. But why is the UN asking the Nigerian president and not ECOWAS to what? stabilize the region? Uh, well, not necessarily. It's just an admonition, you know, uh, concerning the status of Nigeria. Nigeria is um, a very populous country, an illustrious country with a very uh, solid pe pedigree in terms of influence in the West African sub, sub region and even beyond, you know. So we could, uh, the, we, we have in the past intervened in some countries. In Gambia, I do not forget in the period of Obasanjo, when there was a coup, the Obasanjo had to, uh, uh, went into Gambia and restore democracy there as the case could be and so our position is, is it's uh, unmistakable so if the u.n secretary general is just uh, reinforcing that to press to president Buhari, i think it's in order but the point to also make again is that you know the president Buhari is involved in this bilateral relation on the back of his address at the united nations which is also a good a right step in the right direction because the general address is rather ceremonial. He doesn't mm -hmm. speak to any specific, but bilateral um, meetings, you know, means that he's speaking to specifics, speaking to def um, specific nations, you know, and mm -hmm. taking certain things further, especially um, as it concerns, uh, especially regarding uh, on how they can help us in dealing with some of our immediate challenges like insecurity, uh, problematic economy, debt crisis, you know, and of course the problem of uh, corruption, which uh, it is still very uh, prevalent, irrespective of measures that have been taken in, in past years. And do not right. forget again, I'm also, it's very impressive again to see that, yeah, the theme of the United Nations um, General Assembly meeting this year is on the future of the UN, the future of the world, peace, insecurity, climate change, women empowerment, and all of that. President Buhari spoke to all these uh, mm -hmm. challenges as they concern the Nigerian nation. So beyond that, it was also the need for him to talk specific in specific terms with some powerful nations who could be instrumental, you know, to resolving some of our um, challenges in terms of support that they well, could we'll give. We'll get to that. We're definitely going to open up and okay. talk about other meetings that the president has actually had um, there in New York. But I want to still stay a little bit on the meeting with Antonio Guterres. Mm -hmm. there. The fact that he's asking for Nigeria to actually play a key role mm -hmm. in stabilizing the sub-region. Stabilizing a nation costs money. Let's not forget what happened in Sierra Leone and Liberia when Nigeria played major roles. Mm -hmm. And of course, that took a lot of money out of our coffers. So the question is, is the United Nations mm -hmm. going to support Nigeria financially to ensure that this stability that it so desires is achieved? Well, I, I just want to believe that it's one of those diplomatic um, admonition. You know, so we shouldn't in, take it that seriously? Yeah, nothing really fundamental. Okay. I don't expect Nigeria to do things outside, you know, the outside the framework of ever cause you know because it will be too much on us do not forget that we play a major role in the ECOWAS or bridge in the ECOWAS uh, configuration in terms of financing logistics etc etc so we're already playing uh, some fundamental roles so asking us to do any okay. play any other role individually we'll just be expecting too much for us so i just believe that it's one of those diplomatic uh, diplomates you know <laughs> that is evident in um, this kind of um, meetings as the case could be mm -hmm. but uh, overall I, I think we haven't done badly in this outing uh, coming on the back of um, uh, Professor Mohamed Bandi's tenure mm -hmm. as uh, president of president the UN Assembly. Uh, yeah. Assembly. So we haven't done badly. All we need to do is just to further uh, some of our gains in terms of raising awareness on our problems 
you know, and perhaps concentrating on the one that is most uh, nagging, which is insecurity. Well, insecurity, you know? that meeting that uh, yeah. the president had with the former assistant uh, secretary of state for African affairs, who is now mm -hmm. the U.S. Uh, permanent representative to the United Nations, mm -hmm. where she actually, you know, got an applause uh, really from the president where he was yeah. talking about the support that we've gotten from the United States, looking at yeah. the Super Tucano and yeah. all the military equipment they've give, uh, helped us purchase. But what more really can the U.S. do in terms of helping us fight insecurity as a nation? Yeah, look, uh, Amaka, it's, 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 there's no doubt about it that the U.S. still remain the most powerful nation in the world in terms of influence, irrespective of the rise of China, you know, the challenge of China and the constant challenge of Russia. Russia, as the case could be, yes, we have registered our presence at the United Nations, but beyond the United Nations, we also know that the United Nations probably does not have an army of its own, doesn't have a force of its own. Mm -hmm. It works through the prism of support from nations like the United States, which is a very powerful nation. Great Britain, Western countries, Canada, you know, Netherlands, et cetera, et cetera. So it's still very important for us to carry the support of individual nations, you know, constituting the United Nations. And when you are um, carrying the support, you have to focus on the ones that belong to the Security Council, mm -hmm. where the United Na Nations is core, you know, is key. And I think that's what um, our president was trying to do by meeting with uh, the US, U.S. permanent representative in the United Nations. All right, and of course, as we get ready to wrap up this conversation, you know, just coming off of uh, the deal we signed with Russia not too long ago to look mm -hmm. at nuclear uh, uh, ways of helping with our energy sector. Mm -hmm. Right now, the president came up with a very ambitious plan of, you know, electrifying 5 million households and about mm -hmm. 20 million people. Yeah using solar quite ambitious but achievable you think yeah achievable. that's about policy projections in in policy uh, projections you aim high you know and you just try as much as possible to achieve what you can achieve do not forget that they also promised to take 100 million people out of poverty and of course recently we had that about 10 million have so far been taken uh, rightly or wrongly correctly or incorrectly but that's an ambition and of course when you have a roadmap like that when you have a work plan what you do is to work towards it so it's always better to have a roadmap to have an ambitious uh, work plan you know and aim to achieve it you know irrespective of challenges that you might uh, meet across along the line do, do not forget that power has been a bin over the years energy has been a, a major concern yes. over the years and whatever we can do to resolve it is actually uh, welcome Absolutely. Yeah. Clean energy, definitely welcome. Right, yeah. But uh, this is a uh, plan, $400 billion, you know, in the next 30 mm -hmm. years. But we'll see how that plays out. In the meantime, if you're doing I'd have mm -hmm. to say thank you so much. Mm -hmm.